right. I hope you're ready because we have Captain Lee from Below Deck, who I'm going to be chatting with in just a bit. And yes, Sandoval was on Special Forces this week. Kim Zolciak is contesting Croy's divorce filing because she says that they're not really divorced or not really divorcing because they're still together, which is strange. Let's get into it. Oh, hi, it's me, Zach Peter, pop culture junkie, reality TV insider, published author, and host of the No Filter with Zach Peter podcast. Here I'll bring you all the latest news on The Real Housewives, deep dives into celebrity legal scandals, and unfiltered combos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. So be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest tea. Now, let's dive in. Welcome on in. Welcome on in, everybody. I hope you are having a lovely, lovely uh, midweek. Technically, it's not Monday anymore. Now we're we're right at the 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 midweek hump. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have had a great start thus far. Had lots of coffee, walked the dogs, did all the fun things. Like I said, we are going to have Captain Lee on the show in just a bit. But before that, we're going to do some tidbits of tea, shall we? So let's see what has been popping in the news lately. Special Forces aired this week with Tom Sandoval, Tom, Mr. Scandoval himself. Um, it was actually pretty good. Uh, it felt very like fear factor, but with celebrities, I think that Sandoval might actually make it pretty far. He seems like he's pretty committed. He says that he joined because he wanted to be punished. He also just confirmed to Extra that he is single. So if any ladies are looking to hit him up, you can slide into those DMs. Despite rumors that he's been linked to, what was it, the musician that he was linked to and Billy Lee that he was recently linked to, none of that is true because he is single and ready to jingle just in time for the holidays. Hey. So, um, yeah, good good for him. Congrats to, to Tom, Tom Sandy Balls. Looks like he might make it far on... Special Forces. Who else is on Special? Jojo Siwa. And I was like, okay, Jojo Siwa. She's like, I'm from Dance Moms. Snap. And then they're just like, no, we, you trust me, Dance Moms did not. Abby Lee Miller did not prepare you for this. And then we have Tara Reed, who's the hottest mess. Like, she's the hot mess that always delivers on being a hot mess. Um, and she, like, tried to sneak in cigarettes. And then he's like, the guy, the, I forgot what the trainer's name, because there's, like, a trainer, and he's trying to train them and put them all through this, like, intense training as if you were in the special forces, as, as if you were in some sort of military ops, right? That said, um, Tara Reed, it was funny. She, there was like a moment where he's like, okay, you have to dump all your contraband. And she's like, okay. You know, she's slurring her way through it. And then she has packs of cigarettes and she pulls out one. And then he's like, there's more. And then she's like, oh, okay. And then she pulls out another one. He's like, I know there's more in there, sister. Like, give it to me. And then she's like, oh, I don't think so. And he's like, are you sure? And then she like gets patted down. And then they find another pack of cigarettes. And she's like, oh, what a coinkadink. I didn't know that was there. I was like, well, normally, did Tara Reed, I don't even know if you know you're here. We don't even know if you know where you are. You are in America. Well, actually, where was this film? This was filmed in, was it Switzerland, Antarctica? I don't know. It was filmed somewhere else. But Tara Reid never knows where she's at is the point that I was trying to make. Speaking of people that don't know how to read a situation, congrats to Coffee Buzz, actually. Uh, Coffee Buzz, who's been a longtime member of the Zach Pack, just celebrated her one-year anniversary as a member of the Zach Pack on the YouTube. Woo, woo. Also, shout out to JC, who's also been a member for 12 months, one whole year. Woo, woo. We've been together. We've been engaged for a whole. Wow, I can't believe I've had Zach Pack memberships for a whole year. If you were a member, you caught a very Liddy City fun live on Monday night that was not saved. I think I'm going to do more of those. Get a little lit, spill a little tea, turn off the, and, and then turn off the replay. So you only get it when you get it, and there's no recording it. Oh, crrr. Okay, um, Kim Zolciak, speaking of a land of delusion, she wants her divorce from Croy to be dismissed. She wants she doesn't want the judge to move forward with the divorce. As we know, he filed for divorce for a second time in August because when it's true love, you know, right? So Kim says that she's contesting his filing because the two of them are not only still living together, but they're still having boom, boom in the bedroom. So they sound just as toxic as ever. Congrats to the lucky couple. Good for Kim Zolciak. She's trying to save her man. Somebody come get your man. I think he got lost in my DMs. 
what in my DMs. No, only husbands get lost in my DMs. Doesn't mean I act on it. Shannon Bedour, speaking of exes, Shannon Bedour, John Jansen, her ex, his son was just arrested on Saturday for a DUI. So clearly, you know, Shannon Bedour has been quite the positive influence on John's kids. I know that's been a messy situation. They've been a hot mess express since day one, but, you know, good for them. Oh, Special Forces was shot in New Zealand. Sorry, I'm all over the map. Geography is not my strength. I don't do geography. I don't do math. I do tea, and I do it on the internet. So that's where you can find me. <laughs> um, so yeah, clearly Shannon Bedour has been a positive influence. Of now, the son is following in her footsteps. Good for good good for them. Hopefully, they can get it together because it seems like they've been having a rough, a rough go around. And then the Real Housewives of Reunion looks. The Real Housewives of Orange County Reunion looks have now been revealed, and they are looking pretty. Fire. It seems that there's a neon theme, except for Heather Dubrow, who's wearing like this cutout black dress. I think she killed it, nailed it. We have Tamara, who also looks fierce. She's wearing a pink dress, long sleeves, a little bit of a shoulder pad, hair's kind of up. She seems to be happy that she's back in the mix. Gina looks incredible. She's really had a glow up since her season one. Her tan is very, isn't she from Staten Island? Her tan is very Staten Island. Um, Very, you know, very joysy girl, actually. But she looks great. The hair looks great. She's wearing a, a bright neon green dress. And I think she killed it. Shannon Storm's bedore came in like a wrecking ball. She got the, the big 80s hair. She's got like a yellow dress or yellow mesh dress on. She looks fine. Not my favorite. Gina looked great. Gina, or sorry, not Gina, Emily. Sorry, I get the two confused. She looks great. She's like, I got a new hip and now I got a whole new body. I'm a whole new woman. Shane's going to love it. We love we love that vibe for her, right? Then we have Jen, and Jen has a very blue dress on with very large, flowy shoulder pads. This dress just, to me, screams, with the dress this blue and flowy, how can I see red flags in Ryan? Because we love Ryan, right? And then lastly, we have Taylor Armstrong wearing a rainbow because she's bisexual, in case anybody didn't know that, even though she's told us that like every single episode and her TMZ interviews. So good for Taylor Armstrong. She's living her best life. All right. Well, reunion dresses are out. Leave a comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. Let me know what your thoughts are. Who's Who is your favorite? Who is your least favorite? And what are you most looking forward to at the reunion? We have the finale that's airing this week. Reunion kicks off next week. So good for them. All right. We're going to get to Captain Lee in just a moment. But first, guys, fall is here. And HelloFresh can help you plan for the busy season ahead with tasty dishes delivered to your door. Simply choose your recipes and pick your delivery date, then lay back and enjoy your day knowing that dinner is covered. When life gets busy, don't call for delivery. Get HelloFresh. It's 25% off, cheaper. It's 25% cheaper than takeout and less expensive than grocery shopping. Just choose your recipes and receive fresh pre-portioned ingredients so that you can get to cooking quick. Listen, I'm busy with the content, with the traveling, with the puppies, with the setting up the new apartment. The last thing I want to do is worry about running to the grocery store, okay? So getting HelloFresh delivered to my door is easy and convenient, and you can try it now, too. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50NoFilter, that's 50NoFilter, and use code 50NoFilter for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. So you get the initial 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. Try America's number one meal kit. Meal kit right now. HelloFresh.com slash 50. No filter. And also, just wanted to let you know that this episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. Do you ever find that you're just trying to fall asleep and you can't because your brain suddenly won't stop talking? Do your thoughts start racing right before bed or at any other inopportune times? I remember the stress that I was going through this year going on tour, getting the new pups, getting the new apartment. I was overwhelmed. I needed a break. Tom's house is broken into and he confronted the burglar and then had to go have eye surgery. So I sent my son over and then he flipped over his car five times in the snow on the way home. So yeah, I'm under a lot of stress. Turns out one way to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk through them. Therapy gives you a place to do just that. So you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try today. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and 
or you can also switch therapists at any time at no additional charge. So if one's not working for you, you can find the one that's a good fit. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash no filter today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash no filter. All right. Are we ready for our special guest of the hour? He's a super yacht captain, the author of Running Against the Tide, and a staple on Bravo TV's Below Deck. He's got a salty new podcast out, and he's here to dish with me. Please welcome the one and only Captain Lee. Zach, what's up? How are you, Captain Lee? I'm doing great. And if I, if are I, you, I, you living I, your best I, yacht I, life? Hmm? I said, are you living your best yacht life? Yeah. Here in sunny southern Florida, life is good. Well, life is also pretty sunny here in California. We're on two different coasts right now. You're on the East Coast. I'm on the West Coast. I feel like I need to come over to Florida to try out some of these these yacht adventures that I get to see you in on Below Deck. You really do. We actually have an ocean here you can use. Do you? Well, I have an ocean here too, but I feel like I need the full Captain Lee experience, and I can only do that starting in Florida. Yeah, and then we move on to the islands, and then we start to really have a good time. Have you been doing a lot of uh, yachting this summer? I haven't this summer. I've been really, really busy this summer with other projects. I've got, uh, I've got a new show with Kate that yes. we're doing, and that's been hilarious. That's been a lot of fun because I was not a uh, big Housewives fan, didn't watch a lot of Bravo shows, and Kate has been, shall we say, my tutor, <laughs> and she's, she's doing quite well with it. She's great. I was watching some clips of the it's the new recap show on Bravo, right? Where you guys are watching yeah. Bravo shows and then recapping them. Um, how is Kate now that she's in new mommy life? She looks great. She's she is a walking encyclopedia of anything Bravo. I mean, just bring it up and she's got it. That's did, you, did you watch her on the traders? I didn't. Oh, my I God. She killed it. This year. I, I, I don't know what I was doing at the time. I feel like you should join the traders. I feel like you're very no BS and you know how to call people out. Yeah. I think I read people pretty well too. Yeah. I think I'd be able to uh, decipher who is and who isn't, which could be extremely helpful in that show. It is. I mean, you always were able to decipher between uh, the deck crew. You always knew who was worth staying and who was worth cutting. Yeah. That was always helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I ever cut any. There was one guy that I did let go and I really didn't want to because he was just such a nice guy, Sturvey. Andrew Sturvey. Mm. And that was like season two or three. Yeah. And but if he tried for a million years, he was never going to make it in the yachting industry. Aww. But he was just, everybody loved him. Yeah. I mean, listen, sometimes it's just, it's not a fit for you, but there are other talents that you can explore in other places, just not on a yacht. Absolutely. So I know you had a bit of a, um, a a health update recently. You had surgery. How have you been recovering? Great. Uh, my back is, is just fine. Uh, my neck is fine. Uh, my leg is probably right about 90%, 95%. So it was the leg that was giving me the trouble during season 10. But it wasn't a result of either of the surgeries that I had. Which so was was that was part of the reason that you weren't, that Bravo decided to not bring you back for season 11? I couldn't tell you the reason they decided not to bring me back for season 11. They put you on pause without a reason? They said they were moving in a new direction. Oh, so they put you on stop. They didn't even put you on pause. They just said yeah. we're moving on. Do you think Captain Sandy is going to be moving forward with season 11? Uh, she's doing her own thing on season eight of her show. Okay. Well, cause I know, didn't she fill in for you for a bit in season 10 and yeah, she fired she was there. Members, right? Yeah, she did. And no doubt about that. Um, <laughs> have yeah, you that, talked to her at all since then? Have you, I know that there was a bit of tension with that. No, haven't spoken to her at all. Do you guys have a relationship at all or is it kind of, you know, I you don't, I don't think we do. Yeah. And um, I, don't, I don't see any reason to pursue one. 
would you consider returning to Below Deck in the future? Or do you kind of feel like maybe this is a good opportunity for you to explore some of these other projects that you now have going on? You know, once you've been bitten by the yacht bug, Zach, mm. it just, it gets a hold of you. It's in you. You'll never get rid of it. And even if I never do another Below Deck, I'm yeah. definitely not done yachting. By any yeah. stretch, once you once you become a, a yachtsman, you're going to be one till you die. <laughs> I believe so. There's no retirement for you in the works. No, no, not at all. There's a lot of projects that are going on right now, and I'm happy with all of them. They're I mean, a lot of fun. You seem very healthy. You seem very fit. You've got like you, you have, as you said, you have all of these new projects that are on the horizon. You have this new podcast, Salty with Captain Lee. Yeah, that's been that's been a lot of fun. I uh, I wanted to do something a little different, and so I decided to use as a co-host my assistant, my personal assistant Samantha, who I re- fondly refer to as Sam. Yeah, but she's re- she just turned thirty, so we had this juxtaposition between her take on things and my take on things. Mm. which probably couldn't be more black and white. Yeah. So, and she's not the type of person to go along with me just because I'm her boss. Ah, so At that's all. why you guys are getting a little salty on the podcast. What we, is it? Is it, Bravo stuff or what, is it just Bravo stuff or what other topics can people expect on the podcast? She's well, last, what did we get into the last week? We got into a little Cardi B. Oh, remember when, the, remember when the housewives were talking about WAP? Yep. Yeah. Well, we got into the WAP song. <laughs> That's one of my favorite songs. Gobble me, swallow yeah. me, jump on the side of me, quick jump out for you, let it get inside of me. It was, I mean, and I actually got the lyrics because <laughs> I'm not that good at listening to lyrics on, on CDs or anything. So I got the lyrics and uh, it was interesting. <laughs> But I couldn't believe that you had a 35-year-old New Yorker mm. who didn't know what WAP meant. <laughs> so are you a fan of Cardi B now after discovering the WAP song? Uh, the WAP song didn't exactly win me over. I wasn't I wasn't a fan of that. Are you more of a Cardi B fan or a Nicki Minaj fan since that's one of the big feuds right now? Um, what are they feuding about? I don't know. It's something new every day. There's always, it's literally always, I think what it is, is they're two, you know, they're two top charting artists and, you know, Nikki was around before Cardi and Cardi came in and Cardi thinks she's better than Nikki. And so it's like this competition of like, who's really the queen at the top. And I think there's room for every, I like both of them. I like some Nicki Minaj. I like some Cardi B. They kind of remind me of, of back in the day, we used to have what we call shock jocks. Mm. Uh, DJs on the radio and that's when the FCC the rules were starting to loosen up a little bit and yeah. get away with doing some things and saying some things that back in the day were just taboo yeah and some of the shock jocks got well Howard Stern was a shock jock yeah he was one of the originals yeah, I feel like that's also happened a lot with like the late night talk show hosts. They've kind of also had that that competition of who's like the best in the game. Yeah, and I don't well since the right I think the is the writer strike over now? Or I is, believe the writer strike has ended. They've reached a tentative agreement. Um the SAG strike I think is still going on though. Okay, I what's the I'm trying to you're going to have to clue me in. What's the difference between the two? So there's the writer strike and then there's the actor strike. So the first oh. the writers went on strike and now the actors are going on strike. And I don't know, maybe next week us podcasters will go on strike next. God, let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> we got to. Yeah, I want to keep the bills. Paid. Yeah, I want to keep the bills paid. Um, what else have you learned on the on the the salty podcast? Uh that there's some things in pop culture that I really don't know much about. <laughs> What I'm, I'm getting most, a real education. What's been the most enlightening outside of WAP? WAP was definitely an eye opener. Yeah, without a doubt. So that I, uh, mean, I would imagine being on a boat, being in the ocean, there would be a lot of WAP on board. Um, 
I can remember quite a few specific instances where there was plenty of wop to go around. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Uh, Love yeah. some good wop. Gobble yeah. me, swallow me, dip down the side of me. Quick, jump out for you. I'm going to have to teach you the lyrics, and then you can rap on the next podcast. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how I know you were really close with uh, Carl Radke from Summer House, mm -hmm. and you were going to be at the the upcoming wedding in November. Have you talked to Carl at all? How's he doing? I've talked to him several times, and he's he's really having a tough go of it. Yeah, and I've tried to encourage him to uh, to stay strong because I don't want it to have a That's setback true. with his sobriety. Yeah, I want him to maintain that at all costs because. It's very important to him, and it's uh, it'll change his life if it doesn't. Yeah. So for, for the good. But I think he's in a good, not a good place, but I think he's in a good place mentally as far as dealing with it in a yeah. proper fashion. Yeah. Do you, um, did you see them making it to the altar? I thought everything was rolling along very smoothly they were they were down here in florida let me see two maybe three months ago yeah marianne and i and Lindsay and carl all went out and had a early dinner had a great time probably spent three four hours together that afternoon and i didn't see anything that would i would say was raising a flag yeah so you were shocked when the news broke yeah i was just like wow yeah, definitely did not see that coming. And uh, Carl texted me that day and we set up a time to have a conversation to uh, talk about stuff. And I just I felt bad for the whole situation because there's no nobody wins. Yeah. Have you talked to Lindsay at all? No, I haven't. I haven't had the opportunity. I would love to, though. Because we became good friends. I thought we were good friends. I still think we are. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be. Right. What advice would you give her, given the opportunity to chat with her? Obviously, knowing them very well. And, you know, just, I mean, I'm sure you've gone through your fair share of heartbreaks and breakups or relationships that just didn't go where, you know, you hoped that they would have. I think what I would advise Lindsay and Carl is to just slow it down. Yeah. Uh, Try and stay away from the PR as much as you can and from the interviews and from those. And we all know that in our industry, we have some unsavory types that will just take four or five words out of context and twist it into something that you did not intend. Yeah. And all of a sudden it becomes a thing. Yeah. And that's not going to do anybody any good. And I would say to both of them, just to, slow it down, take a deep breath, assess the situation, assess your, your, you know, what you're going to do with the rest of your life and how you're going to go about it. I yeah. wouldn't make any real rash or extreme life altering decisions at this point in time until you, you know, you give your fa faculties a chance to catch up with what's going on around you. Yeah. And actually process everything. And I feel like, you know, it's going to take a minute. The hard part is when you, live your relationship out on a reality show then not only do you live that experience but then you have to live it again when it airs and then you have to live it again once you have to tape the reunion so i think you know it's good that carl has somebody like you in his court that can be a nice sounding board to help him through all of that because i imagine it's going to be an emotional journey having to relive everything yeah there's going to be there's going to be some situations where you know i hope somebody's screaming in his ear don't answer that <laughs> That's don't respond to that yeah not a question or, a, or anything that you need to respond to so were you and just attending the same thing yeah would you were you just attending the wedding or were you officiating the wedding um we hadn't discussed officiating as we were still a couple of months out but i was definitely going to attend yeah and uh but it was it was fortunate that they gave everyone enough time to to get okay. their cancellations in, in time so they'd get a full refund. Yeah. So I don't know about the plane tickets, but hell, plane tickets are good for a year and you're going to go somewhere yeah. in the next year. Yeah. If anything, it'll force someone to go on a vacation, a well-needed vacation. 
Hey, and the Mexican Riviera is pretty sweet. I'm not arguing with that. All inclusive. Yeah. Turn me yeah. loose. <laughs> so now, Captain Lee, we did have the Zach Pack did send in some questions for you. Are you ready to do a, a little Q&A? Let's do it. Okay. The Bravo Babe wants to know what your favorite boat inspired movie is. Oh. Commander with Russell Crowe. Okay. Well, we know what your, your favorite boat inspired song is. It's WAP by Cardi B. <laughs> it's definitely wet. <laughs> um, Abby Charles on Instagram wants to know what was the most difficult sh or who is the most difficult chef that you've had to work with? Oh, I think I would have to say Mr. Dobson. Mm, why? Yeah. Uh, that I, for some reason, I just had this innate distrust of anybody that speaks about themselves in the third person all the time. <laughs> so you but, don't you don't refer to yourself as the Captain Lee? No, no, hardly ever if I've ever done it at all. But he was just God. He was an annoying little prick. <laughs> um, okay, the genuine Jade wants to know if you could create your own area from the below oh sorry your own team from the below deck show who would it be oh no i can't answer that i mean i i do have obviously kate would be on there okay. uh, probably eddie or kelly but there's been so many really really good people on board uh connie was really funny for the one series one one season she was on i'll never look at a jar of peanut butter the same again but <laughs> I mean, there's just so many people that uh, to choose from over 10 years. I think we did like 175 episodes. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, 10 seasons. Yeah. It's a lot of deckhands. Yeah. Uh, Foxy Feline wants to know if you'd ever take your own one man show on the road. So you have a, you have a one man show that's coming up nightcap. Yeah. It's happening in Vegas, November 2nd at the Westgate Las Vegas resort and casino. Yes. It's only, so it's only November 2nd, but Foxy Feline's asking if you would ever take it on the road. I would, we did, we did a, uh, a nightcap here in Hollywood, Florida. Mm -hmm. at the uh, Hard Rock Casino, Seminole Hard Rock Casino. And and it was just, gosh, we had so much fun with it. And when the opportunity came up to do it uh, in Vegas, I thought I would, even if nobody shows up, I would have to shoot myself in the head to, to pass this up. Who gets the opportunity to play yeah. Vegas? I know. I would love to do Vegas. So I am just, I'm, you have an open invitation to attend if you'd like, sir. Okay. Are you going to see Erica Jane? <laughs> That's not far away from you. No, it's not. I was just in Vegas for the Erica Jane show. Are you going to go see Erica perform in Vegas while you're in town? If I have time, depending on what Bravo has me doing during BravoCon. Oh, are you going to BravoCon? I certainly am. I All will right. Be there. I like it. I feel like we need a one-man show at, at BravoCon. It's going to be a busy week. There's no okay. doubt about that. I'm curious to find out how many, how many actually, and I know I'll, I'll never get the answer to this, but I wonder how many people are going to attend BravoCon because there were some like over 30,000 people last year. Yeah. I mean, and now it's Vegas. Vegas is more central. So I feel like more people can travel in. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, you've got California just, what, two and a half, three hours away. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting, an exciting weekend. I think they're going to pull out all the stops. Yes, at least. Yes. Well, I'm, people are. In, about it. Yeah, if people are in town, November second, Westgate, Las Vegas Resort and Casino, Captain Lee will be having his nightcap show live. What can people expect from the show? Uh, a lot of storytelling. Uh, can we get a, a a rap of you doing WAP? <laughs> first. I'm not sure. I've got enough time to throw that one together. <laughs> Just the dance moves alone, Christ. Yeah. Um yeah, that would be that would be something. That would be something. I would pay money to see that. Um, who are you most looking forward to seeing at BravoCon? Are you looking forward to seeing Tom Sandoval after uh, all the Sandoval drama with Vanderpump Rules? No, I could care less. <laughs> I, I don't, you know, I, 
I can't understand his motivation. And then what surprises me most is after all of that, that he and uh, I don't know if it's Rachel or Raquel. I don't know what she's going by now. You should go by Rachel now. All they went through. And and then he dumps her. And then trashes her in the press. Yeah. Like, like you blew up a nine year relationship for this woman. And then you just like done. Thank I, you. Next. I think the lesson learned there is if you picked up somebody from, you know, that was cheating on another person. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the same fate probably awaits you sooner or later. Yep. She, she blocked him on Instagram, which means it's really over now. Oh, the shouting's all quieted down. <laughs> um, Serpent <laughs> Shannon wants to know, what would you be doing if you weren't a captain? Do you have another dream job? Wow. I always thought I'd want to be a pilot. Really? Yeah. But I wanted to be a, uh, a military pilot. Okay. I wanted, you know, F-16s. Would you do Tom Sandoval's landing a post landing on a postage stamp in the middle of the Atlantic? <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. That would be fun. Um, Tom Sandoval's actually doing the new season of Special Forces on Fox, which is where they take different celebrities and put them in like a military style training. Do you think that's something that you would ever do? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I would love I would love to do that. I see where Tom said he wanted to be punished. Yeah. And I think the producer like took, needs a dominatrix. I think the I think the producers took him at his word. <laughs> I've seen I've seen some clips, and uh, that doesn't look like ketchup on his face. Nope, he is going through it. I mean, but if you're gonna go, I mean, I don't know. Is that a form of healing? Um. I mean, I guess putting your body through the challenge could be cathartic in some way because you're kind of pushing yourself and testing your limits. And it it didn't appear to me that the challenges were so much there. Were, I mean, there were some physical, really physical challenges, but I thought a lot more of it was mental. Yeah. How strong are you? How tough are you mentally? Yeah. How well can you stay focused? Uh, you know, they had a couple of sons where they were, you know, Fallen was a long way down, but yeah. you knew you had a safety line. You weren't going to die. Yeah. But I, I guess we'll see how he fares. We'll see. There's the season's some... just getting started. And who was that in the background? Oh, these are my puppies. Oh, I have right. Sky and Sully. They're, they're pups. They're seven yeah. months old, as giant as they look. Wow. They, they keep me busy. How are they? They're uh, they're a mix. Their dad's a go golden doodle, and their mom's a full breed Labrador. <laughs> Good looking dogs. Thank well you. Well done, Zach. Thank you. Um, Ioko on Instagram wants to know what was your favorite memory filming below deck. Gosh, I think it was season one, and uh, I was back in the boat into our slip that was going to be our home for the next eight weeks and I saw had to be 50, 60 people all standing there waiting to converge on the boat like ants. And I remember looking at these people and they're all Hollywood types, uh, afros, piercings, tattoos. Uh, Nobody had anything that resembled like work clothes or anything like that. They were dressed in various stages of, I don't know what. Yeah. And I thought, Oh my God, what have I got myself into? And I'll never get another job on a yacht again in my life. This is it. I'm over. I'm done. And by the end of the day, these guys had converged on the boat and I'd never seen a group of people that I mean, I couldn't have been more wrong about them. I've yeah. never seen I've never seen a group of people just come together, work together, work harder, and get as much done as these guys did. And they completely tore the boat apart, put it back together inside of a week. Wow! Wired it for sound, wired it for audio, wired it for video. 
and the next by the time the next week rolled around we were ready to film wow and it was really impressive and i think that was my my fondest memory i mean there's been a lot of ones that are you know have been comical funny uh some not so funny <laughs> but yeah I mean, and who know who knew it would end up where it is today? I mean, the franchise now has so many different spinoffs. You were on for ten seasons. Now you had this new show with Kate. Like it's really evolved. Yeah, we nobody knew. We didn't know what we were doing. Nobody had ever filmed a reality show on a boat that's moving that's actually going out to sea. You know, nobody had to worry about transporting the camera guys and the sound techs back to their hotel rooms at night. Yeah. And just the logistics of everything and then putting it all together. And then I think we shot some, I think they only did 10 episodes the first year. And they still had some 40,000 hours of film. Wow. That they had to go through and develop this storyline. And it was just. They killed it. It was great. Uh, Blue Moon Ash wants to know, will we ever get a book of Captain Lee-isms? Yes, I am. Going, I am going to start working on it probably this year, and hope to have it out uh, first half of next year. It'll probably be a coffee table book, and it's probably going to be my favorite ones, and some of the ones that you know favorites of the of the fans. But it's going to be more adaptive. Like, here's the situation where would you would definitely use this expression <laughs> and then here's a situation where it might get you in a whole lot of trouble if you do ah uh, that's funny so i'm looking uh, forward to that yeah patty says that she is loving your your podcast salty with Cap captain lee well tell her i said thank you very much um, and Norma wants to know, what is the scariest experience on the seas that you've ever gone through? When Ashton got pulled overboard. Oh, yeah. That that scared me to death. I couldn't think of anything because he was 30 seconds away from being dead. Yeah. He that just didn't crazy. know. Neither did anybody else. Yeah. And the thought of having to call his parents up and tell them, because all of that falls on the captain. That, that was scary. That was the scariest. Yeah. Um, Anaconda wants to know, someone said in a podcast, seen several saying this, that the crew doesn't sleep on the boat, but in a hotel. Is that true? The crew do sleep on the boat. They do not sleep on a hotel. There'd be, there'd be no way to do the show if they did. Just wouldn't work. Yeah. The film crew don't sleep on the boat. Yeah. And the producers don't sleep on the boat. But everybody else that's cast, you can bet your sweet ass they are sleeping on the boat. <laughs> uh, Brian wants to know, where is the place you'd love to sail or power yacht to but haven't had the opportunity to yet? Probably uh, the Seychelles or maybe Galapagos. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. I'd like to do that. Uh, I'd like to do the Galapagos because there's so much, so much nature there. That's just untouched, unspoiled. Norma wants you to drop a Captain Lee-ism for everybody in the, in the oh. podcast today. Right. I'll give you an example of what I what I'll probably include in my book. Like if your husband comes home and you tell him. Mom's coming to visit for two months. Now, it probably wouldn't be a good time right then for you to say, oh, Jesus Christ, I'd rather drag my dick through 10 miles of broken whiskey bottles and have your mother here for two months. That one's my favorite. The dick through the whiskey is one of my favorites. Yeah, that's probably not going to get you a lot of points. So that would be an opportunity. Just don't use it at that that point in time. Well, that's my specialty is saying things when it's not the right time to say them. 
you two? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I do want to get some of your takes before I let you go on some of the Bravo shows that are airing right now, because I know you and Kate are recapping them for Bravo. What are your thoughts on Taylor from Southern Charm? Taylor and Austin. Do you think that they've actually hooked up? How far do you think that they've gone? Is it breaking the bro code with Shep? Well, uh, Kate and I, we had, uh, oh, who was it? Damn it. Craig. Craig. We had Craig on our show. Yeah. yeah. And Kate said she's so good at this. She picks it up really, really well of what a terrible liar Austin is. Yeah. So if he's, if he's uh, spouting that they didn't hook up, I'm betting they did. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think it's going to affect Shep a hell of a lot more than he anticipates it. Cause he likes to play it cool. He likes to be like, I don't care. I've moved on. I don't care what she does. Uh huh. Until somebody dropped that bomb. And that, that guy is a little shit stirrer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. So and he what, dropped that bomb and, and Chef's eyebrow went straight up in the air. What are your thoughts on that, though? Just the fact that Austin is Shep's good friend, but yet he's befriending Shep's ex and then having sleepovers with her. Yeah. Um, I don't know if, if, if Shep's that good of a friend. I don't think you do that. Yeah, I think they I think he definitely is, you know, I think he's violated the bro code. Yeah, without a doubt. And even thinking about it. Yeah. You know, you shouldn't be having you shouldn't be having he shouldn't be having conversations with her. He shouldn't be doing anything with her. She is off limits, period. Yeah, if that's your friend's ex, especially such a recent ex. It's not like you guys dated 10 years ago. Like, they just broke up. And did you see this, the amount of sweating that Shep was going through going to the uh, the reception? Yep. I mean, he, the poor boy was sweating bullets. Um, are you caught up on Real Houses of Salt Lake City? Uh, pretty much I am. Um, what are your thoughts on Angie K crashing the Palm Springs trip? I thought that was pretty tacky. Yeah. And then causing yeah. issues at the dinner. As as bad as your feelings may be hurt, guess what? It doesn't change the fact that you were still not invited. Yep. Pretty I'm good. pretty sure you've had a few yacht crashers, haven't you? Oh yeah. I can remember one time we were in uh, we were in the British Virgin Islands. It's like three o'clock in the morning, and we were anchored just out of outside of a, a little floating bar called Willie T's, which has been a floating institution in the British Virgin Islands for a hundred years. Yeah. And these people came back and our slide was out and everybody was, you know, in their bunks sleeping and these drunks came on board and just had to go down the slide once. And the last I saw was the last of them going down the slide. They're oh both picked God. them up and away they went. <laughs> I thought it was funny. That's something I probably would have done, you know, yeah. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Captain Lee, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Everyone, go catch his podcast. The podcast is called Salty with Captain Lee. And then he has his new nightcap show that's coming to Vegas November 2nd at the Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. Tickets are on sale right now. Captain Lee, thank you. Zach. Thank you, sir. It's been a real pleasure. You were, you were salty. You delivered some WAP. We had some hot takes, and we had a good time. Yes, we did. Thanks again, Zach. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode of No Filter with Zach Peter. You can tune in to new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Give me a follow at Just Plain Zach all over the internet, or you can keep up with the podcast at No Filter with Zach on the Instagram. Thank you to Captain Lee, guys. Again, go subscribe and listen to his new podcast, Salty with Captain Lee. He's delivering the WAP. Gobble me, swallow me, drip down the side of me, quick jump out for you, let it get inside of me, tell him where to put it, never tell him where I'm about to be. Talk your shit, bite your lip, ask for a car while you ride that dick. You really ain't never got a fucking ball thing. He already made his mind up before he came. Hey, go catch Salty with Captain Lee, Nightcap in Vegas, November 2nd with Captain Lee. And I guess he's going to be a BravoCon too. 
And don't miss his his new recap show on Bravo with Kate Chastain. I almost said Kate Casey. Kate Chastain. Go give them some love. All right, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. And I will talk to you soon. Ciao for now.